John, it's great to have you in the studio. And I'm always curious to find out when people became what they are. So <laughs> yeah. you're a biologist, you know, have you been a biologist from the day you were born kind of thing? Or, or did you have other dreams as a child as to what you would become? I was going to be a professional baseball player. I mean, and that and was, how, how did that go for you? Well, I, you know, I was, I was the starting pitcher in the, in the Pee Wee House League uh, championship game. And I shook the mayor's hand and all that stuff. But that, <laughs> that was about my main moment of glory as a baseball player. How did the biology uh, interest <laughs> materialize in your life? My my father was a chemist, and so, I mean, I can remember him taking me aside as a relatively young kid and trying to teach me trigonometry or uh, <laughs> doing a little chromatography experiment or something Small like things that. like that. Things, you know? things like this that I think we always do with our children. Right, and you imagine yeah. that this was happening in households the, across, this, across Canada. Of course, this is absolutely yeah. normal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everyone does that. Was there a further step where you said, okay, now this is starting to, to be something that I could shape my life around. Yeah, it's something that I've always struggled with, actually. And I, and I think a big part of that is I feel kind of ambivalent about technology and about the things that we're able to do. Think about all the incredible medical technologies that we have to make people's lives better, longer, which are all wonderful. But the flip side of that is that I think we start to feel like we have a whole lot more control over things than we actually do. Mm. And that gets us into trouble uh, with lots of potential for things to go wrong that we haven't necessarily even thought through or, or don't even know could happen. And so that... So you kind of lived with that tension as you started to get exposed to the possibility of what is a life of science yeah, look like? Yeah, yeah. And so continuously, huh. I guess, feeling the tension between am I am I helping things or am I part of the problem if I go into this and do yeah. this? And, and even now, I still feel that. My main area of research is, is developmental biology, which, you know, we're looking at really stem cells in a way, although I happen to study obscure little worms. Mm. Um, <laughs> but you'd be surprised <laughs> how similar people are to worms in, in, in a biological sense, uh, not, I think, in a spiritual sense. But. Take me into a moment that <laughs> shaped your sense of saying, this is bigger for me. One was in a first year course that I took in uh, invertebrate zoology. So looking at all the little animals without spines, mm. everything that's squishy and creepy crawly you can imagine, um, and just having to do tons and tons of memorization of life cycles, of shapes of these things, how they reproduce, all this kind of stuff. And, and, it, and you start to wonder whether all of this glut of information really <laughs> matters in any way. Um, but on the final exam for that course, the, the final question on the final exam, was a question that asked us to, to put ourselves in the position of being a, a worker with the World Health Organization mm -hmm. and, and working in a, a region of the world that has a rice-based economy where they're having particular problems with a, a worm parasite that uh, gets into people's livers. And the question basically asked, how would you go about addressing this given that finances um, and technology are extremely limiting in this? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it dawned on me, well, ah, I know a little bit about the life cycle of this worm. And part of it involves it getting into people's systems through the soles of their feet. Um, and so all of a sudden, it, it, it just dawned on me that, well, yeah, we could just make sure that these people have something to put on their feet, something with soles, like sandals or something mm. like that. And there it is. It's a nice low-tech, low-cost approach to uh, <laughs> to dealing with this problem. And that, and that made me think that, you know, it, science really is about curiosity in a lot of ways, I think, and sometimes just being curious enough about something mm -hmm. to figure out how it works um, can give us answers to some pretty, really pretty significant problems. So for you working at a bit of that tension of, am I going to be part of the problem or part of a solution if yeah. I pursue this, that final exam question gave you a picture of something that could be life-giving. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. if you can help me understand worms, then I think pretty much <laughs> everything else will make sense, right? <laughs> sure. sure thing. Well, Thanks, John. Thanks, David.